What's up guys, Ben Kohler, the Tackle Otaku here with the Hookup Tackle. Today, we're gonna to talk about the top five mistakes that we see people make when they're drop shotting. Now, about 20 years ago when I started guiding, drop shotting was really a big thing that was moving here to the US. And still to this day, a couple decades later, it still has this big mystique from a lot of guys who are just finding out about it, just learning about it. And then, of course, here in the shop, we're always helping people refine to get the most out of this technique. We seem to see the same mistakes over and over and over again. So today, we're gonna highlight those so that hopefully you can prevent yourself from making them. And if you are making them, you can correct them and catch more fish. So if you're ready, let's go. All right, guys, so let's dive in to the top five mistakes that we see people make with the drop shot. Now, just in case you've been living under a rock and you have no idea what a drop shot is, this is essentially a drop shot. So a drop shot is a bait that is rigged above the weight and the weight will land on the bottom and the bait stays either suspended off if it's a floater or it will slowly flutter down to the bottom. It just allows you to present your bait in a different way versus just dragging across the bottom like a lot of other finesse techniques do. Now, even though this seems very simple, there are some little tips and tricks that should help you guys get more bites. But the biggest thing is, is not only do I want you to get the bites, but I want you to land those fish so that your enjoyment is maximized because of tournament fishing, you're cashing in on every opportunity and we can right some of the ships that maybe are a little bit of off course, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start from what I think is the most important down. I mean, these are all really important, but we're gonna start from technique to getting the bite, okay? So the first thing we're gonna talk about today that we see people make mistake over and over and over again on is line. So line is a very important thing to consider when you're drop shotting. And the biggest thing I can tell you is that when you're considering line, you have to take into consideration the diameter, okay? Now, we should all, 100% of us, be using fluorocarbon line to our bait. I don't care if you have straight fluorocarbon going on your spinning reel, if you have braid and you're tying a fluorocarbon leader off to, however you like to do it is fine, and we can discuss pros and cons of that in the comments if you want to, but there needs to be fluorocarbon down to the bait. And the reason for that is this is a finesse technique. So we want that fluorocarbon line down there because it's invisible. The fish can't really see it. It's got lots of abrasion resistance, little strength. So it's the right line for this kind of technique. Now, even though fluorocarbon is pretty much invisible underwater, the diameter affects the way your bait is gonna move. So a lot of times we see people come in with too heavy a line. They're going with 10 pound or even a lot of times eight pound. And sometimes it's just too thick for getting the maximum movement out of the bait. Now keep in mind that a lot of this is gonna depend on the brand of line that you guys are using. So you're gonna always see us holding up line like Sunline, Seaguar, some of the higher end Japanese fluorocarbons because this is really what you guys should be in. If you guys are throwing something like a Berkeley 100% fluorocarbon, remember that the diameter is totally skewed to the pound test. So eight pound test doesn't always mean eight pound test, okay? So for instance, since I just threw Berkeley into the bus, their eight pound test is 0.28 millimeters thick. That's the same as Sunline 12 pound. So if you think you're throwing eight, because it says eight on the box, you're throwing the same as everybody else is throwing 12 if they're throwing sunlight. So your line is way too thick. You're not gonna get the right action out of your worm. So what I would highly recommend is I would recommend staying at eight as your biggest, but really start thinking about dropping down into size into something like a six or a seven. Now, I know it doesn't seem like that much of a difference from eight to seven, but the diameter is about 15% difference each drop down you make. So you're gonna get 15% more movement out of your bait, even at just a rest, right? Because remember, the water has current underneath it, it's pulsing, it's moving. So the thicker your line, the less your worm is gonna be able to move. So if you guys are struggling getting bites, you're like, man, everybody's catching my drop shot and I'm not, dropping down in line size is gonna be critical for you. It's gonna help you get a lot more bites. Okay, so seven is where I start most of the time and I'll go down to six or five if I really need to get an extra bite. 
A lot of guys just go to eight because eight is simple and eight is fine if they're eating eight really well, but a lot of times they shy away from eight because the bait doesn't get quite enough movement. So that's when it's a good idea to just drop down in size. So don't think that one line is perfect for all conditions. You need to mix and match based on what the fish are telling you. All right, next thing that we see people make mistakes all the time on is their hook selection. Now, there are nine million different hook choices on the market, right? Different brands, different things, right? But the biggest thing that we get here in the store is, man, can you help me get a new hook? I'm losing fish like crazy. And almost every time I can guess the hook that they're using, okay? So let's break this down really quick. Now, there are two different styles of hooks that we use, okay? So the first option is a nose hook option, which would look something like this. This is gonna be a smaller hook. You're gonna basically just hook the bait right through the nose. And this is gonna give the worm or the bait that you're using maximum movement. It's gonna showcase the bait the best. The downside is, is that it's gonna snag anything that you drag it into. So if you're fishing around a lot of brush or cover, not usually the best option, but if you're fishing more open water and rock, the nose hook could be the way to go. The other type of hook we use is more of a weedless presentation, right? Some guys just say it's a Texas rig drop shot or weedless drop shot, but this is gonna be the presentation that we're gonna use when we're fishing around a lot of cover. If we're dragging it through wood, through weeds, through brush, and we need it to be more weedless so we can come through the cover without it snagging on every branch it touches, this is the way to go, okay? So let's start with that style hook real quick. There are basically two different styles of hooks we could use for our weedless presentation, okay? One is gonna be like an EWG style hook and the other is going to be a straight shank, okay? Now, I don't like to say that things are right or wrong. If it's working for you and you're getting bit and you're landing fish and you're having fun, then it's right, right? And if you're losing fish and you're getting frustrated and you're not having fun, then it's wrong, okay? This hook is wrong every time, okay? So if you are gonna be drop shotting, you need to get away from this style hook and get into more of the straight shank hook. And here's why. If you are using an EWG style hook like this guy, what happens is as you are shaking through the brush, this bait, as it hits logs, will slide down on your hook and it will turn into a clump of worm on a hook, right? And then as you wind it in, this thing winds in and spirals back in. And every time it's spiraling in, it's twisting your line, okay? One of the number one complaints with drop shot is line twists, right? And the number one cause of line twists is your worm not being straight on your hook, okay? So if you are needing to use this type of rigging, this weedless or Texas rig type rigging, it's probably because you're coming through brush. So by going with a straight shank, you can eliminate that problem. They'll have a keeper on it. So as you're coming through the brush, it will prevent it from sliding down. So you can actually work this worm up and through the branches. And as it comes over, you can just drop it back down so it falls back in the cover. And so you could actually maximize your time in the strike zone and in that cover by using the right hook. The other disadvantage to using a hook like this guy is you'll notice that there is very little gap between the hook point and the eye of the hook, okay? So what happens is when you actually set the hook, you're skin hooking the fish. And so the fish are barely getting hooked. So you'll swing and you'll hook them, you have them on there, and then, oh, it came off, right? Or, oh, I got him, and then he jumps, and then your shit goes flying, right? That's because the hook never actually penetrated all the way through the barb to stick them and get them. When you use a straight shank hook, then you've got tons of gap between the eye and the hook. It's all space. So when you swing, there's plenty of hook to actually penetrate into the fish's mouth and the hook gets in there and it will stay in there, hopefully, right? So if you're looking for some good straight shank drop shot options. These are our favorite two. This is the owner cover shot hook. What's nice about the owner hook is it's made out of a zo wire. It's got that nice coating so it penetrates easy and it has a little flexible fluorocarbon keeper so it holds the baits on there really well. And then 
Roboworm makes a hook called a rebarb. It's a gamagatsu hook, but it has the right keeper on there for keeping your worms in place. And either one of those are good options, okay? Jumping to nose hooks, okay? And this is one that we get every single day in the shop. Most people that get into drop shotting tend to start with this kind of hook or this exact hook. And this is the Gamagatsu split shot drop shot hook. This is, in my opinion, the single worst hook on the market, okay? Now, most guys start here because it says drop shot, so it should be right, right? But it's not. This hook is not built correctly. This is a notorious hook for hooking the fish and losing the fish. So if you like to lose fish, keep throwing it, okay? But if you actually like to land fish, we're gonna change it up and we're gonna show you guys some better hooks. And again, the same reason that this hook is not right for drop shot is the hook point and the eye of the hook are basically at the same angle, okay? So there's just not that much gap there for that thing to hook. So when you swing, again, you just kind of skin hook them. So again, you're gonna have them and they're gonna jump and it's gonna toss your shit and down he goes, right? So let's get rid of these. Now, a lot of you guys have been enjoying the Gamagatsu G Finesse one. This one is definitely a huge improvement. It has the right bend, but it's got such a small little barb that a lot of guys find that it doesn't stay in very well, especially for smallmouth fishing. So I can't stress enough that the best hook for nose hooking on the market is this dude. This is the Decoy Shot Rig Worm 10, okay? It's the right gauge wire and it has the right bend to it. Hopefully you can see that there is a huge gap now between the point and the eye of the hook. So when they swing, that thing is gonna go straight through the mouth. It's gonna get them every time right in the hard part of the jaws. It's gonna penetrate through the barb and that way you're not panicked every time they come up and jump. You're gonna be able to stick them and land them. If you can't find the decoys, another great option is the owner mosquito hook. And the mosquito hook comes in a regular or a light version. But again, it's got the proper amount of gap between the eye and the hook point. So you get great hook penetration and great landing ratio. All right, next thing that we see people not do right all the time is bait selection, okay? Now, there are a gazillion options for worms and baits that we can drop shot, right? But what we find is we find people get stuck in one lane. Now, if you grew up on the West Coast out here, you're probably throwing a robo worm like 90% of the time. If you grew up on the East Coast, you're probably got a whole box of Zoom finesse worms and trick worms and that kind of stuff in your box as well. And day in and day out, if I had to pick one bait to go out to the lake and throw in a drop shot, it would probably be some kind of worm shaped bait, like a six inch straight tail robo worm. But don't get stuck in the trap that all of a sudden you've been catching them on this thing and now they're not eating it. It's because they're telling you that things are different. So we can adjust our baits based on seasonality, based on forage that the fish are feeding on, based on water clarity, right? So let me just give you a couple really easy tips and tricks, okay? Think of your straight tail worm as your go-to starting point every time, okay? So if you're just starting out, you have no idea what's happening, throw a straight tail, okay? Something in a natural color, a brown, a green, just make it look lifelike, okay? If the fish are a little more aggressive, if they're seeing smaller forage, either craws or shad or little bluegill fry, that kind of stuff as the water's heating up, then you can switch to something that has a curly tail to it. And that curly tail is just going to give the worm a little more movement as it moves, just a little more life that's a closer imitation of what they're seeing under the water, okay? So sometimes just by changing from a straight tail to a curly tail can make a big difference in bites. Another thing you can do is if you know that the fish are feeding on craws, you could switch to a small little craw profile. You don't always have to drop shot a worm. So you could throw a little two or three inch craw, shorten the leader down, okay? So go to more of like a four or six inch leader from your hook to your weight, and then just shake that craw right there off the bottom and give them something that's very natural. Another thing you can do is if the fish have a lot of aggression but they're not really reacting to your curly tail, is you could go to a smaller style bait that's gonna have more of a darting motion as you move it. 
Now this is an OSB Doe Live stick. This is a three inch. We've talked about this before. It's a great drop shot bait. What's great about a bait like this is you can just do quick little hops and the bait will kind of dart back and forth. So you can get a lot of movement side to side instead of just up and down like a regular worm. If the fish are feeding on a lot of bait, they're chasing shad, or there's a lot of minnows in the area, then don't be afraid to go to a swim bait style on your drop shot, okay? So this is a mega bass hazardong shad. Instead of like shaking your worm, you're just gonna be more of a straight drag and you're gonna basically present a bait that's moving, you know, eight inches, 10 inches, 12 inches off the bottom, okay? So if they stopped biting for you, get creative in your offering of your baits and don't be afraid to try new things, okay? You can drop shot anything, but give some different baits a shot, okay? All right, next mistake that we see a lot of guys make is in gear selection. Now let's start with the rod, okay? Over the last decade or so, rod companies have started printing on the rods what they think that rod is ideal for. And basically, if you are a big box store customer and you know you're not gonna get a lot of help, it's useful to see, oh, that's a drop shot rod, and pick that rod up and go. Unfortunately, it's confused a lot of things because they're not always labeled correctly, or maybe a better way to look at it is that a lot of guys think, well, it says drop shot on it, so I should be able to do everything drop shot on it when it's not really built that way. So we're gonna break it down really quick. So, speaking of a rod that says drop shot on it, this is a G. Loomis DSR rod. Okay, this is the, their drop shot rod. And this is one that we see a lot, because Loomis is a wonderful brand, and it says drop shot, so a lot of guys think, well, I should be able to throw my nose suck, I should be able to throw my weedless, I should be able to throw my lightweight, my heavyweight, but that's not how a rod like this is built. If your rod says drop shot on it, chances are 99.9% .9 chance that the rod is built for light line, nose hook, lightweight. Okay, five pound, six pound line, three sixteenth ounce weight or eighth ounce weight, small little three or four inch bait and a nose hook. The rod is probably gonna be super whippy, okay? And it's just not gonna have any power to it if you're making a long cast, if you're fishing a little heavier line, like a seven pound or an eight pound, if you need some power to drive a hook through, if you're doing a weedless presentation, or if you're using a heavier weight, like a quarter ounce or three eighth ounce that we use all the time in deeper water or bigger water, okay? So if you're needing a rod more like that, then you're gonna want to look at more of a jig and worm style rod, okay? So something in a true medium right, in a jig and worm style rod that's gonna be a little bit faster action, not quite as whippy. It's gonna have more of a bend through the midsection, but very powerful. And there's tons of great options on the market, but don't be afraid to try something that says jig and worm or shaky head on it. Most of the time, those are the better all around options than your quote unquote drop shot rod is. The other thing that we see people do all the time is they go with a cheap spinning reel, okay? Now, I can't emphasize enough the importance of a good spinning reel. Now, a lot of guys think, well, it's just a line storage device, so why spend 200 or 500 or whatever on a great spinning reel? Well, here's the reason. When you finally hook a big one, you want the spinning reel's drag to be so smooth that the startup inertia required for this thing to spin is so low that when that big one surges at the boat, the reel does its job and lets him take drag and lets you pull it back in and you actually land the fish, right? So what you're paying for on a good spinning reel is the ability for that line to butter smooth come off of that thing, okay? You'll see a lot of guys on tour, like if you guys have been paying any attention to some of the smallmouth tournaments, you'll see the guys with subpar gear out there actually panicking and they're trying to strip line off of the reel and that's nonsense. If you have the right reel, if you have a reel with good drag, you don't need to do that. You set it properly, you let the reel do the work for you. So this is a Daiwa Exist. This is the best spinning reel on the market. So if you want the one with the greatest drag, the smoothest reel, this is it. But you don't have to go crazy. You don't have to spend 500 or 700 bucks on a reel. 
the Daiwa Kage is another great option at $199. It's gonna give you just as smooth of a drag. It's a beautiful reel. So there's tons of options, but if you're really gonna get into drop shot fishing, you really wanna spend the right amount of money to get that nice, smooth, buttery drag so that when you finally hook those giants, you actually get them in the boat. All right, and then finally, the fifth mistake that we see a lot of guys make is the way they retrieve their drop shot. Now remember, this is a bottom technique. So the biggest thing I could tell you is as you throw out, right, make sure the bale remains open and that drop shot falls all the way down to the bottom before you start your retrieve. Okay? We see a lot of guys just throw it out and then immediately just start moving it. It has to maintain bottom contact. So if you're making a cast and you're working it back down the bank, make sure you're constantly in contact with the bottom. That may require you to open your bale, slow down, do whatever, but make sure it's staying on the bottom. Second thing is, is we see a lot of guys spaz out on these. Okay. I don't know what instinctively goes through people's minds, but a lot of guys think they have to throw it out there, let it get to the bottom, and then they're just shaking the shit out of it, right? And that worm is down there literally seizing out down there. And if you want to tell a bass how your beautiful, nice, finesse bait is not real, give it a seizure underwater, and they will swim the opposite direction. Remember, there's current in the water, you're getting a lot of push, so literally, you should have to do very little on your retrieve. Okay, it's literally just a slow little drag, right? And then wind down the slack and then just kind of lift, right? Very controlled, very smooth. And that worm is just gonna undulate naturally and that water is going to push it and give it life. Now, there are times when certain baits may require you to just kind of give little pops, right? Or little shakes, but little is the key here. Remember, if you move your hand just an inch or so, that rod tip is moving like eight or 10 inches, okay? So all we're trying to do is get our bait to barely, barely move. We don't want this thing jumping up feet at a time. It doesn't look like anything natural, right? So calm down, slow down, right? Nice gradual pulls is good. Maybe just a little shake, right? If you're by something, but just like this and then wind back down the slack, okay? It's almost never, I can never think of a time where I've been there where I'm just shaking this thing, you know, like crazy. Calm down, slow down, you catch more fish. All right, guys, it's been fun. I hope you learned something. I hope you can add some of these into your arsenal and maybe fix or tweak or prevent yourself from falling down one of these bad habit paths. So if you have any questions, drop me a question down below in the comments. Of course, we'll put links to anything that we showed in the comments. As always, thank you guys for your support and your business. We appreciate you watching. We'd love for you to subscribe, so please do. Until next time, peace.